What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Geese Company. My name's JS. This over here is Mr. Messiah Complex Cosplay, a.k.a. Jeffster. How you doing, Jeff? I'm well. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Guys, for those of you... Yeah, lots of thoughts and feelings. Yep, yep. Um, guys, if you are not subscribed to this channel, and we, we, we keep forgetting about this, but please make sure you subscribe. I, I mean, we, we're getting a lot of views, but a lot of people aren't subscribed, so please take two seconds, click that subscribe button. It's like 100% free. It really, really helps us out. And when you click the like button, well, it lets us know that you really like these shows. So make sure you click that like button. Uh, we are today talking about The Mandalorian, Season 3, Episode 3. Called uh, the convert, by the way, yeah. is what this one is called. Let's say this right away. Go ahead. Major spoilers. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff in the, in the show. If you haven't seen The Mandalorian season three, episode three, go watch it, then come back and watch this. I, um, which I'm sure has some bullshit double meeting. Yeah, I mean, I think sure we all does. know who the convert is supposed to mean. We're well, assuming, but I don't think that's, well, but, I don't know. Yeah. So we'll listen. Get there. Yep. It was a weird episode. Um, I'll say. A lot of the comments that I heard from Mr. Producer Jen over here throughout the episode was, wait, this is supposed to be a show about who again? Because really, we had two minutes at the beginning with Mando, and then two minutes at the end with Mando, and the rest of the episode was with the dumbest smart person I've ever seen on the fucking planet. So I've seen some really funny little things calling this an episode of Mandor. Lorian, because it is a very Andor esque episode. Which, again, if that's what you love, this is definitely the episode for you. But this was the least Mandalorian episode of the entire series thus far, mm -hmm. easily, mm -hmm. easily bar none. Uh, that that opening with him and Bo and the big, huge Tie Fighter, Tie Interceptor battle. And by the way, I think we kind of called it last week as well. Bo kind of checks to see if he saw the Mythosaur. And he didn't. And she's like, oh, that's funny. No, I didn't see anything either. La, 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 la. So she's clearly keeping that knowledge to herself to use at the appropriate time to hopefully, you know, first she wins over the, the covert and, and the rest of the Mandalorians or whatever it is she's doing. Um, so all of that, yeah, all that opening was right in line with everything we've come to expect from what is easily the best thing on TV that's got to do with Star Wars. And then what in the fuck happened? I'm all for world building. I'm all for character building. But what was the goddamn? Why take 30 minutes to tell us something you could have told us in three? I don't. So first understand. of all, this was the longest episode of the season. This God one came damn. in at like 59 minutes. It was like yeah. an hour episode. You want to know and why? It felt like two hours. Oh, God. Um, now, I'm sure there's a point to that. I'm sure right? there is. There's I'm sure there's going to be something be. coming down the line. Holy and obviously, God. the whole cloning thing to me, they've told us already that they want to link the Mandalorian to the creation of Snoke and the right. creation of the First it, it Order. It leads into the, the, the sequels, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I, that character, I feel like, is going to be instrumental to taking us towards that. But... Well, they, yeah, but they wiped his mind at the end of the episode. Yeah, so it's they, by far they the worst. Like, I don't... Yeah, the guy that the cloning facility guy that was doing the cloning research for the Empire, the guy that was in charge of sucking Grogu's blood, now has been rehabilitated and integrated within the New Republic. And he's clearly, they've got, what do they call the program? They've got a... Oh, man, I was so upset by that entire thing. I honestly don't remember. Yeah, I forget what they called it, but it's like a rehabilitation program where they yep. take ex-imperial troops officers, and troops. officers, yep, scientists, it. whatever, and they rehabilitate them, and then they reintegrate them working, living free, on Coruscant, uh, working for the New Republic. And it's like, well, wait a second. Like, wait, you're what now? You've got somebody that was on Moff Gideon's ship, an officer on Moff Gideon's ship that's just running free on Coruscant, and you're okay with that? Which clearly went sideways because she's clearly not on the level. I yeah, I I still don't even know what I, I don't really understand what that was all about. But was she supposed to sniff out possible? people that would be subjective to to going back to some sort of imperial ways but then but then she cranks up 
the mind flayer to 11 and, and like wipes his mind out so clearly she has an alternate agenda on top of that none of it it was it was such a huge weird everything about it was different to the rest of the show up until now we're in the third season man all mm -hmm. of a sudden you have like a 40 minute diversion to this the music was different the color palette was different the layout was different the writing was different the acting was like everything about this was completely different feel look sound wise to the entire rest of the show mm -hmm. this felt as weird as the two mando episodes in the book of boba fett only this sucked and those were good like i don't what are you I, uh, uh, yeah i that was my reaction even if it goes somewhere this is not going to feel worthy of the time we had to sink into it i'll never watch that episode again i'll never i why would I ever watch that episode again unless it's mm -hmm. to watch the very beginning and the very end? Mm -hmm. the, Otherwise, the beginning, the dog fight at the beginning oh, is dude. amazing. Fantastic. Like seeing Bo and and Din flying their ships no, no, and, no. and the moves awesome. that they're pulling. And it's like, oh, wow. Like, and I even like how wicked. he says, like, wow, those interceptors are a lot tougher than regular TIE fighters. I'm like, yeah, this is so good. Like, this is what I paid my money for, man. Yeah. This is Star Wars. This is 100% dog fights with TIE fighters? Yeah. What took us so long? This is genius. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh, and wait. Then, what? And uh, yeah. And then we have an intermission. <laughs> yeah. For some stupid thing that should have been like a uh, weird, like it should have been on like Tales of the, like it should have been on Visions. Like it should have been something that was its own little separate thing that you had a choice to watch if it would then clue you in on some deeper backstory thing that might help you later i don't i don't know it, there's no way the juice is going to be worth the squeeze there's there's no i don't care where that leads whatever it is it's not going to be worth what we had to endure for 40 minutes or 35 minutes or whatever the fuck it was oh mm -hmm. i i haven't been i've never been this mad at this show ever and th if they hadn't gone back to bow and din at the end i i would i i might have even been done like i was that mad like, I was so upset. I'm like, mm -hmm. why did this feel like such a betrayal? But we do get back to Bo and Din at the end. Din says he's going to take her somewhere safe. So he takes her to the, to, the, to the covort where they're all hiding. And there's a key scene where Din shows the armor of the living waters. She tests them. Din is now redeemed. Episode three, kids. Din is now redeemed from taking his helmet off in front of Grogu. But so is Bo-Katan. Who, the armorer asks flat out, have you taken your helmet off since you bathed in the living waters? And she says no. Now, this episode is called The Convert. And at the end, they make a point of watching all the men, the, the Death Watch Mandalorians putting their hand on bow. And she's just kind of looking around. And I know it's tough to get those emotions with the, the helmet on. But it sure looks like, hey, I was sulking by myself in a castle. And all of my people left me. And now and these I'm people part are... of something bigger exactly they accepted me like that as yeah. soon as they find out i'm in living in the water as soon as that armor over there says i'm good then i'm good so at the beginning of the episode this looks like oh i'm going to use that mythosaur to betray him and take over and by the end of the episode you're like oh maybe she is one of them now maybe she has turned her cloak and maybe she's now Maybe this is the way. Uh... Yeah, it's hard to say where it's going to go. I like that they made a point to show that Paz Vizsla is not happy with right. her being there. Right. Because um, there's just one more person now between him and what Well, he no. Feels. So there's more than that. So Clan Vizsla and Clan Kreese have basically been at war at odds for many, 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 many years. Right. Um, you know, Clan Visla was, they were the leaders of Mandalore until right, Clan Kreese right. came along and became the leaders of Mandalore, right? right. So it, it's one of those things where there's an, there's going to be animosity between her and him. I got you. Just like there's been animosity between him and Din for having the Darksaber, right? Um, well, he didn't, I like like, Din, he didn't like Din right off the jump. Right in that first season when Din sure. comes back with all that Beskar, it's Paz yeah. that says... That's from the purge. Like you're dealing with the enemy. What are you like? Paz has not liked him right from the get go. Yeah. So yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if they're going to develop that moving forward. I hope they do. I guess it depends uh, on how much time they spent with the cohort and, and where that eventually leads to. 
You know, Death Watch tends to be the bad guys of the Mandalorian, right? Clan Vizsla tends to be the bad guys of the Mandos right. in Star Wars, especially if you've watched the Clone Wars and Rebels. Right, but they're Vizsla's not the not, good guys. He's not leading right? this. Like it's the armor that's really leading. A hundred percent. Even takes orders from her. I don't know who she yeah. is or why she holds such sway over them. Mm -hmm. but I mean, I mean, I guess their armor is their life and she makes it. So it would make sense that she would have some sort of an elevated position, especially mm -hmm. since they are, in effect, in exile. But that's and that's not really how they've been portrayed. Again, remember when when Dan in that first season, he's pinned down in in, in uh, uh, Nataro and mm -hmm. they're in grief and all his men are after them. It's 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 the Death Watch that comes in. It's the Death and Watch. Saves his saves, ass. Yeah, it's the Death sure. Watch that saves him when he's a kid. And it's yeah. the Death Watch that saves him. So that's not how they've been portrayed on the show so far. They've been portrayed as essentially, I mean, zealots and freakazoids, but still the good guys. They've come to his rescue at least once. And now if you watch that tra those trailers for season three, you can see there's other scenes where they come out in force, where a mm -hmm. bunch of Mandalorians are clearly jumping into a fight of some kind. So I don't know, man. Like, if this ends up being, it's not just Din and Grogu anymore. If it's like, Hi, I'm Din, and this is my crew. I I'm here for that. That's that, and that's what I told you last week, right? I yep. feel like this is where we're going. We're going towards a reunification of the Mandos, and rebuilding the Mando. I don't want to say Creed because it's more than that now, right? Like it's, it's. I don't know how to explain it. I think it's going to turn into more than just a Creed, and and and. They're, they're rebuilding. I think that's what they're doing. They're rebuilding the Mandalorian. Right. Well, like we said last uh, week, now that they know that the the, the 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 planet is not a poisoned, I mean, it's still a wasteland. I mean, I still don't know how they would ever bring that planet back to livability, but they, at least they know they can go there. They can go there, exactly. Right. So, so either way, it'll be interesting where it goes. But Well, episode... it's all going to hinge on Bo, right? She knows there's a mythosaur down there, and right now she's the only person in the galaxy that knows there's a mythosaur down there in those waters then she could go mm -hmm. back to that at any point and like i said man if she comes back riding a mythosaur i don't care who the fuck is there with her a dark saber or an armor or whatever she comes back riding that thing they're all gonna flock to her banner 100 percent. they are my thing is is that would be very out of character if she was able to ride the mythosaur because she was never really truly meant to lead right her no, but was. you understand, and I'm not saying she would end right? up being the leader, but I'm saying if she's going to make a power play, that's her. That's that her would be the power play for 100%. sure. There's I think a reason a she mistake. doesn't tell Din. Yeah. Right. I think it would be a mistake. I think it's going to, uh, I think the better way for this to turn out would be for her to try. And Din again, flying in and saving the day and he rides the mythosaur. Yeah, but he doesn't even know what's there. Right? So you, so they'll have to have some sort of a. You know, he saves something along those lines. They'll have to have something where she tells uh, she eventually because so far, like she made a very clear point. Did you yeah, see anything she, down there? Yeah. No. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. How about something alive? Do you see anything yeah. alive? No. Oh, what oh, do you mean? How oh, fascinating. No, yeah. Don't 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 ask why I'm asking these very highlighted specific yeah, questions. Yeah. These very specific let's questions. Just, let's yeah. just move on. No more yeah. questions. Then let's go. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how much more I want to talk about this episode because frankly, it just wasn't a good episode. I think we still uh, there have were to some highlight. good points, but yes, there were, but uh, yeah, it's important to note that this, this episode, they've done brilliantly with this show up until now. This episode was the first for me, major misstep. And mm. I hope this is not indicative of what's to come, that they're going to have all these sidebars that are way too long and feel nothing like the rest of the show. If that's going to be the case, man, this is going to be a rough go. There has to be a point to what they did. There I agree. There has to be something coming. There has to have been a reason for no, them I'm... to take us completely Agreed. out of what's going on in the Mandalorian and throwing us in the world of Coruscant and the New Republic and this rehabilitation program and all this nonsense. There has yeah, to be something. The weird part is when it was only when it like in the first like, I don't know, when it was five minutes old and he's got this like getting to see what this era's Coruscant look like as the new Republic is forming. And like, I was actually like, Oh, this is really cool. Like they're showing this what it is, but then it just kept going. And that's when I was like, Oh, and then like after 20 minutes, I'm like, wait a minute. And then after 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, what are we doing now? Yeah. Like, at one point it's like, so well, where the fuck stupid. is Mando? Like yeah, I'm like watching five Mandalorian minutes into here. the Coruscant scenes. I was like, cool. We get to see what Coruscant looks like. Now this is actually kind of fascinating. I'm good with this. 
I did not need it to take up two fucking thirds of the episode. Anyways, you're right. You're right. We're just I, rehashing. I, I, maybe even more than two thirds of the episode. Three but, quarters, whatever it yeah. was. It's too much. Way yeah. too much. Way yeah. too much. Ugh. I feel like this is something that should have been peppered in within maybe the rest of the episodes. Like, do you think? Maybe this is a storyline they should have started right from episode one. Oh. Instead of doing 32 minute friggin' episodes, yeah, 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 yeah. make them 45 minute episodes and include a little bit of and that. Include some of pieces of this throughout. Agree yeah. wholeheartedly, man. That's you a know, great idea. 100% how it yeah, that, some little that, epilogue at the end of every episode. Some little two, three minute, four minute epilogue that d- progresses this end of the story. Yeah, because she's not watching, but Jen fell asleep. I, I don't blame her. I don't blame her. That's the closest I've come to turning it off and walking away from this show. That's yeah, the I've come it was like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, why are bad, you doing this? Like, this I don't is... want to watch Mandor. I I tune in to watch something that's not that. Yeah, don't give me. Don't try to make this that. Keep yeah. this this because this is what got us everything. So yeah, no, like I that. agree. I agree. I, I, as much as people loved Andor, this is not Andor. No, this is Mando. That's right. Keep it Mando. Yes. Right. Don't I make want it into Andor. Adventures across the galaxy. I don't want any of this nonsense. Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. It better be a one-off because if it's like this moving forward, man, yeah. I'm gonna struggle. For me, anyway. I'm, I'm gonna make a comparison here. For me, Andor felt like the prequels to Mando's original trilogy OG. yeah that's that's not does bad. that make sense that's right not, for, for us for our generation that makes perfect. yeah yes. like there was a lot of politics and a lot of you, you know politics let's be yeah, honest no, it's, I, yeah, it's, absolutely. it's all politics and intrigue yeah, and no, that's not terrible. why i watch star wars i watch star wars for terrible. the swashbuckling adventures right no good guys versus work. bad guys the, yeah no. I, I i don't want them to turn this show into andor and i really hope that they don't but I feel like, and unfortunately, the closer we get to the First Order, the more it's going to feel like that. Right. Yeah. The more we get to close, right. closer we get to the First Order, the more this show, I think, is going to feel like Andor, unfortunately. Oh, but I don't want it. We'll see. Hey, listen, you never know. Maybe this was a one-off, and, and, and now that they've introduced all this concept, now maybe we'll just get little pieces throughout the show. And you know, hey guys, who knows? if there's if there's anybody out there that liked that segment of the show, put in the comments what you like. Yeah. About it. Let us know. Give us a counterpoint as to what you liked about that particular segment of the show. Because like JS and I have said, for us, it took us out completely, but maybe it didn't for you. So educate us in the comments down below. Let us know why you thought that was great and that should stay and there should be more of that. Because, man, am I struggling with it. Holy shit. Yeah, me too. And I don't I don't know that there's Ooh. anything else to add to that. No, no, I think we're good on this one, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Yep. We'll so come guys, back next week. Like Jeff says, let us know below. Make sure you click subscribe. Again, really, really helps us out. Stay geeky, everybody. We'll see you next time.